Welcome back to Bits of an Artist's Life. This is Sandy Hester. Today, what I thought we would do, I have got a stack of sketchbooks and I've also surrounded myself with materials that I have been reaching for a lot this beginning of this year. And I thought I would show you what those things are, show you some examples in my sketchbooks of how I'm layering them and using them, and then show you here in a sketchbook examples of that. So a couple weeks ago, not a couple weeks ago, a couple videos ago, I shared with you some of the markers, like watercolor markers that I've been really enjoying. The Windsor & Newton and the Faber-Castell. They are artist quality, light fast, and I have been loving them. They come with two different tips, a smaller and a wider, and I find that I use both tips on both of these. I've loved both of them. I'm using them like crazy. So that's one thing I've been reaching for. Another thing I've been reaching for a lot are paint markers in different like sizes and brands. The brands that I've been using are Posca, these fat ones, and I think I have some smaller ones, thinner ones of Posca, yes. Something like this. And, oh, here I already had an example right there. I have been using Montana in different sizes. And the newest one is Liquitex. I will tell you, the Liquitex has a shiny, like it will, it will dry shiny, where these other brands will dry matte. But the way I've been mainly using them avoids the shine for the most part. But I also don't mind the shine, and it's not, it's not um, shiny enough where the pages stick together. You know, like if you use regular acrylic, not acrylic gouache or something that's more matte, the pages will stick together in your sketchbooks. With this, it doesn't. I've not found that to be an issue. The other thing I've been reaching for a ton are my Neo Pastels, or just oil pastels, period. Cinele. Neo Pastels are my favorite, um, but I've been reaching for these a lot and using them in a way where they're not so gloppy and in a way where you can work over them. And I'm gonna show you how I've been using them to be able to work back on top of them because usually you can't work on top of those very easily. The other thing I've been reaching for is old, almost dried up acrylic gouache and also flash paint. I'm gonna put flash paint in the same bundle of family. Flash paint is basically acrylic paint. It's a vinyl paint. Flash, F-L-A-S-H-E. It's a brand. It's been around way longer than acrylic paint, and I love it. It dries matte. I have a mixture of all kinds of stuff in these little pots. This is what I used to use for traveling, and I pulled them out recently, and they're real gloppy, and I've been loving that because it's been giving me texture, and I'll show you how I've been using that. The other thing that's become just a constant are color pencils. I have a video out that I share my favorite color pencil colors. So all of those things I've been using and layering. Oh, I got this page out because I was going to show you some of this. Um, I do want to go ahead and lay some of this down before I show you some of the sketchbook examples because I want to I want some of this to dry. So this is the Liquitex and this is Cadmium Red Light Hue. And because this is shiny, really it doesn't matter if it's shiny or matte, this is how I'm often putting it down. Putting it down like this and then just rubbing it. It leaves a nice texture and it doesn't shine. Plus it just gives me like something, just a, a shape to work over. I'm gonna put some of these blobs down because I wanna show you, whoa, that was way more than I meant to do, but we'll just kind of go like this. I am someone who gets their hands in their paint a lot. Same with my markers. I am often, you know, let's say if, if I'm even just doing like a tree trunk, I'll do this and then get my fingers in it. One of the things that I love about that it leaves a nice texture, but it also, my fingers end up getting really dirty 
And so then when I start smushing, it adds extra color to whatever I'm doing. And I like that. It just creates color and movement in a way, um, you know, just I, where I wasn't expecting it. Okay. Let's see. And even with lighter colors, I like to do that. So I know that my hand is quite, my fingers are getting quite dirty. That actually did not transfer any. Okay, let's set this aside and let that start drying. Oh, I think I just knocked y'all pretty good. Let's take a look at some of these examples. I think I had some of this in order, but now that, I don't know, I just grabbed them, we'll just kind of look at things. So here is an example of a, a timed sketch that I did. And I first laid down some marker and then what I'll do is go over that with color pencil. I did that for both of these. And what you get with that is depth and texture. And then for some of these darker marks here in the B suit, I added more marker. But I will almost always layer it with two things. Even if it's color pencil, I'll go back over it with another color pencil. It's just a way to add depth. Again here, I don't know if you can see the subtlety of like this right here, but I did marker, and again, smushing it with my finger. And I can't tell what I used right there, but I'm guessing probably color pencil to add some more, just some depth. And the same on his suit. I probably used Neo Color too on top of that. It feels like it's a little waxy, but I could have used oil pastel. I probably just got the shape down with marker or a paint marker. Here is an example of my old thick, goopy gouache. Now, I don't really love this sketch, but I do love some of the texture. So, I double dip in my paints all the time. You can see the color down in there. And what I like about that is then when I dip in the yellow and there's a little bit of blue, it adds that. And I also like how thick and gloppy the paint has gotten because it adds texture. Let me grab a brush real quick. So, I mean, this paint is literally just so chunky. But what is nice about it is that then it goes down chunky also on the page. And then, you know, I'll just dip, dip in that white that has all that other color. And there's texture. So I've really been enjoying it being gloppy like this. It's just been very nice. I've enjoyed the glop. This was a Liquitex marker also. I wanted to put some of this down. Okay, let's resume the drying. Let me move on to another sketchbook to show you some more examples. Let's see, this is gouache, oil pastel, and color pencil. This I used all kinds of stuff. I think I first started with just a big wash of this kind of ochre and used thick gouache. I used color pencil over it and I can also feel oil pastel. Let's see, this is an example of gouache and color pencil. And you can see again, because of the thick gouache, the movement in that paint all around, dirtied paint, glopping it on. And then I went back with color pencil to add in some of the detail and to bring out the birds here and here. So that's all I used on this was color pencil and gouache. Let's see, I have a bunch of examples in here. Let's see, all right, we'll do this one. So one of the ways that I've been using my markers, my watercolor markers and my paint markers, I will just put a blob down 
like I was doing here. If I know I'm going to do a figure, put it down. Blob it in for the arms. And then just smush it. And then go back in and you can carve back into that with color pencil, with more markers, anything. And that way I've got some loose. I've got nice texture there. I've got some more examples. These were also done. Oh, I didn't have that in shot, did I? With, uh, this is done with this Liquitex marker. I just laid down a big shape. Psh, 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 psh. You gotta get in there fast too with your hands before it dries. Same here. Put some blue down, smush that around, and then carve back in and draw on top of it. Um, often y'all ask me why I skip a page. It's because at some point we're gonna start making books of my sketchbooks. And when you scan those in, if you've got something on the back side on thinner paper, like I use here with these Royal, Royal Talons, it will show through. This was done at a coffee shop uh, on location at a coffee shop, quick sketches, and I used that same thing using things like, I think I used this Montana paint marker, which is, oh no, I don't have my glasses on. I think it's shock yellow. Just a big shape, kind of the, the shape that I was thinking, fast, smush, smush, smush. Then I let that dry and came over here. I did the same thing, kind of just got the shape and smushed it in. And because of that, I get some interesting shapes. All of this, same thing. Put marker down. A lot of times I'll have a dirty finger. I'll smush some more. But that's just how I'm getting some of these textures. Same thing here. Her little face. I used this beige red marker. I would just kind of get the, the area, smush it in. And then with things like her cheeks, I would go in with something brighter like this um, pale rose. And let's, uh, let's act like this is the face here. I don't have anything in front of me to just kind of look, so I'm just gonna make this up. But like, let's say, okay, here's her hair. I would probably Take something like this. A lot of times I'm just sneaking up on it and blocking it in. Whoops, that's all still wet. Blocking in some eyes. I would take something like this, like a marker that's bright pink, get in there fast and smush around. Maybe take something like a red for her lips. Well, I kind of like that shape, just lopping it down. Um, and because I snuck up on her eyes and just kind of colored that color pencil, then maybe I would take something a little darker. And because I've kind of got a shape there, now I can kind of carve back in. Ever getting my fingers in there and I like using multiple different mediums because it gives you different texture okay And then also what you could do here is, let's say you wanted to lighten that. Maybe you're like, oh no, her face is way too whatever. Well, maybe I'll take a color pencil, a lighter color pencil, and work on top of that and see if that works. 
which I don't like that as much. Another thing you can do is you say, oh no, I didn't like that at all. Well, take something lighter. This is a Posca, which is, what color is this? Ivory. Put a little of that over it and just, now look how I smeared her lips. Well, that's okay. Let's just smear it all. And then we can, once that dries, go back into it. And all that is is building layer and layer and layer, which is, to me, quite wonderful. I doubt that's dry yet, but let's just see. So then you can just go back in. And try again. Oh, I had a color pencil on my lips. That's why that sounded weird. And so let's say that cheek went out further than what we wanted. Well, that's fine. Let's just carve back in. And that's how you get nice texture and marks. Or that's how I like to work. Okay, let's keep looking at the examples. Let's see. This is one where I used all the things. I used color pencil, I used acrylic markers, watercolor markers, oil pastels, and just kept building up. I'll show you in just a minute how I use the oil pastels where I can continue to work on top of them. Let me finish these examples. This is another one where I used all the things and just kept building and building and building and pushing things back. And you can just see how you get really nice texture in that. And another one with all the things. This one was done very quickly in, and I, I didn't even put an extra color for his face. The background was this color. I've been layering. Uh, I think I had started on his face, didn't like it, so I did that kind of blop it out with probably something like this Liquitex parchment. I probably had a dirty finger, smushed it, and then it turned this weird color. So then I just drew his face on top of it. Oh yeah, I remember, because his hat was red and it looked weird. That's what made, when I added that Liquitex marker to that parchment, it smushed and made this color. So then I just built his face and her face into that. Okay, one more example. Okay, this is also, see how I started these? big just shapes, that's how I started these. I just kind of blocked in the shape. You can see this Liquitex, what did I use there? I probably used either this ivory, what is this? This is beige, I have a beige and an ivory Posca that I really like. And I'll just put some down, smush around, which was nice because it made his hair. And then just kind of get the shape. And then I went back over it with color pencil just drawing things in, and then this is marker. And the same for these figures. And the same here. I used that Posca and just drew these figures. And then do you see how bits of it, after I go back over and actually carve in a little more to the exact shape, but see how there's little bits of that? I use that for his hand and his feet. That's what kind of creates texture and some looseness. So I'm gonna use this as reference to just draw. And well, let's go back over some of our shapes, our blobs that we made. I don't wanna to forget to show you how I use the oil pastel. So let me do that. So oil pastel is very thick and nothing will really go over it. It will kind of push it around, but it won't go over it. Actually, I do think, yeah, the paint markers will go over it. Yeah, that will go over it. But one of the things that I do a lot is I'll put that down and then smoosh it in. It kind of gives you the same effect that smooshing in the markers does. And because of that, once you smoosh it, not only does it give you great texture, but then you can go back over it a lot easier with colored pencil, which is super nice. You can't go over it like amazing, 
but you can go over it a lot better. And then you can keep going back over it if you want. So let's take a white. Let's say I wanted to push all of that back some. Say I could just put some of that white like that and then get my finger in there and smush. And look at all that nice color and texture that's creating. And then I can just keep going back over that if I wanted to. And still my pencil will go over that for the most part. Again, not, not amazing, but it will go over it. And sometimes it, it uh, picks it up, it kind of moves it around, which is nice to me too, because it creates some nice chunks. Okay, let's say that this is my guy or a person. I'm gonna use this, is it dry? Yes. Now I'm, I'm slightly making this up and then partially using that guy as my guide. So again, I kind of like to sneak up on things, kind of block my eyes in. Let's give him some rosy cheeks. Got some nice dirty fingers at this point, so. I think I also want to give him a mustache. I'm gonna grab a color pencil and give him a cute little mustache. Let's see, give him some eyebrows. And let's give him, let's see. I'm gonna take my Windsor & Newton Cadmium Red Hue. Let's just put a little bit down like that and smush for a mouth. And I'm gonna give him a nice blue shirt. We're gonna kind of give him a, you know, like slumpy. Give him a little pocket. His arm. Grab, uh, let's see. What? Let's just grab another watercolor marker to give him some pants here. Ooh, I think I got, gave him kind of a big bum. And see, then what I can do is carve back in around that hand. What I would usually do too is, let's see, let's give him some colored hair here. Let's knock these pants back just a little bit. See so yeah, how you can just kind of go back over that to knock it back? Kind of look like a game of skirt. That's okay. So that's how I would do that. Now let's take this example right here of this tree. I just did a nice dark shape. Then what I can do is go back in with other things, other colors, even things like this beige red and start building in other color. Layering that color, smushing things in going in with my color pencils over that, either to lighten or just to add color. 
but I don't have to start with what was there, what color I actually saw. Then you can just build that up. And then let's say you go, oh, I just really don't like that. Mm -mm, way too dark. I just feel like I need to start over. Well, what if we just do something like that then and push it completely back? While that's still wet, add some color to it. I've got some loud noises going on in the background. We've got a plumber here, and I didn't know he was still out there working. So sorry about that if you can hear that. So once that dries, then you can keep working into it. But again, let's take this right here and make this into a face. Let's see, you can either take a darker color. I think I'm gonna take this color. This is Luminance Burnt Ochre. I kind of see a face in it, so I'm gonna, I feel like there's a kind of a bun here. And, okay, Grady and the plumber came in, so <laughs> I had to stop. Okay, where were we? I think we were focusing on this lady. I guess I just mainly want you to see, like, see how I'm carving in and there's bits, you know, outside of, um, of the screen, or even just the fact that we're using something different, like a green for a face, is interesting. Or at least it's interesting to me and then how we can just carve, you know, carve back in and use materials. And, and then let's say, whoa, see, we got our big old mouth, way too big. Well, that's okay. Let's, well, let's try our Neo Pastel. Let's do a green, since we're here with the green. And what about some pink for some cheeks? What can we get there? Ooh, let's give her some fun orange hair, maybe. Let's carve back in now for her face. I just don't fear mistakes because of this process of being able to go back in. And I just know that it adds, it doesn't take away. It gives me freedom to play. <clears throat> okay, this dried over here a little bit slick, which is perfect because then I can show you how to, oh, it did, yeah, so that worked right over it. I wasn't sure. Sometimes when it's slick, things don't want to go back over it very well. So we're just kind of acting like this is a tree trunk going up. And then we can just add texture and color. And everything underneath just adds to it. Let's take some oil pastel. What color? I don't know, let's just add some white. One of the things that's nice is then when you do get some resistance, it actually, I really like it. You do have to be a little careful. So I've got oil pastel there, or if I had Neo color, and then I take my watercolor marker this it can get gunked up so you may want to like wipe it off someplace because it can pick that up if it's water soluble it can pick it up 
which the oil pastel is not, but if you were using Neo Color, could be. So just don't be afraid to get your fingers in there, see what kind of textures you can get. Maybe scrape your fingers through it. So these are all the things that I've been playing with and layering with, whether it's landscape or figures or just whatever. Whatever I'm using or whatever subject it is. Should we see if we can get this lighter? One of the things that's nice is then when you get some resistance, it just creates texture for you, which is fabulous. So see, we could have made a face out of this. All these we could have made faces out of or anything. What else? I feel like I need to flip through my sketchbooks to like, I don't know, get an idea of. Well, let's say this was even just part of a tree that had apples on it or some kind of you know, fruit. Well, add that red or whatever, that kind of brownish color, and then build up your green on top of that. Put a little blob down and then smush it. Don't be afraid to go over those apples apples. Things also dry a lot faster if you will get your fingers in there and then work back into it. See, now that was weird, so let's just blob it out. Just blob all of it out. Okay, anything else that I wanted to show you? I didn't, I feel like I didn't show you much of the paint, but I think I just wanted to show you how I got texture. And then what I'll do is also, you can just work right into this, right back over this. That's what I, I do that all the time. Just work right back over it. Put it down and then work over it. Doing the same thing, smushing. Using all the materials. I'm kind of acting like this is that tree. <laughs> Pushing things around with color. But I thought it was especially important to show you like with the oil pastels, how you can work back over it. If you'll get your finger in there and do some smushing. You can't work back over it perfectly, but way better than if it was just regular. See, I wanna just kinda of keep working on all of this because it feels fun. At this point, it's like super exciting. So even this right here, to me, this would just easily turn into a face. I'm like about to sign off and here I am like, oh, let's, let's just keep on. Also like when some of these paint markers are like not real juicy, you have to kind of pump down on them to get the juice. And I feel like it's creates some nice texture. So to see that that could be kind of your your basis of your face, and then you could start working back into it. This is a Montana. Is this Montana? Yeah. Can't read what color. Rose, I think. 
And I think you get the picture here. I probably don't need to keep flying, but do you get the picture too of how addicting this is? I feel like it's very addicting to just play and play and play. Okay, I am gonna stop, but that's how I do it. And then this is, you know, that's actually pretty clean because when the plumber came in, I washed my hands. Uh, and then usually I'm just very gunked up at the end of the day, but that's okay. And I also don't mind, you know, I like, I like the transfer. I like that. I mean, look, I could create a face right there just with my transfer. I mean, y'all are probably like, Sandy, stop. Okay, you can just put a little blob there, smush it around, and you've got an eyeball. Just like that. Little eyeball, little mouth. Pop. And then going back in and just continue to work into that. Okay, I've already showed you. Uh, let's stop. Uh, again, I hope this was helpful, and I hope you picked up some things, and I hope that it makes you want to go and play and smush your things around. See what you have. Even maybe take kids crayons. It just really doesn't matter. Play, experiment, make a mess, and practice kind of layering and getting texture and depth. I think that's what this does for you. It helps you stay loose and creates depth. If you've enjoyed this kind of video where you get to see me get my hands in there, how I layer things, even if you're someone who doesn't like to layer things, you just use one type of medium, I think people don't use even one individual medium in the way that they could use it because you don't get your hands in there. Um, if you're So what I was going to say is if you're interested in seeing more of how I use different types of mediums, how I get my hands in there, if you don't know, I do have a class. It's a landscape class. And even if you're not interested in the landscape, painting the landscape, this class is eight hours of me getting my hands in there. You get to see how I layer things. You get to see how I go out in the landscape, observe something, take what I call notes, basically quick sketches, and then bring them back in the, into the studio and make more works from those. I use all the mediums. Even if you don't use all the mediums, but you are interested in how I use different things, this could be a really good class for you. I'm gonna have a link below where you can go check it out. For some reason, I'm like, out of breath. I don't know why. So I do hope this video has been helpful, that you've enjoyed just seeing how I push things, uh, either a little like literally, physically push things, but then also how I kind of push materials and um, layer and try to bring depth into my work. So again, that class is really helpful for seeing how I do that. But I also just hope you've enjoyed this video. Let me know if you've enjoyed this type of video. And oh, the other thing I was gonna mention, a lot of you have asked about my earrings. My friend Joanna made these for me and I love them. I'm gonna put a link below to her, either her website or her Etsy shop, probably her website in case you're interested. She makes just amazing art, really fun stuff. And uh, I, wear, I feel like I wear these earrings all the time now because I just love them. They're fun. Let's see. I think that is it for this week. So I will see you back here in two. Oh, I did want to say this. You've already probably like pushed end. Thank you guys for your outpouring of love to us and our family for the loss of Cooper. You guys were just uh, so sweet and grieved with us and I just really appreciate it. So I wanted to thank you guys for that too. Okay, see you in two. Wrap it up. Wrap it up, Sandy. Wrap it up. <laughs>